Asu Barilu says, Hi everyone, I'm Mitch, and welcome back to the channel. Today you're going to have to forgive me if I'm not smiling terribly much, because in Armenia, in Armenia right now, there's not a lot to smile about. A few days ago, Azerbaijan launched a massive attack on... Um, Nagorno-Karabakh, which is, of course, Artsakh and Armenian territory. It's been an ongoing conflict for many years. And once again, Armenia sees itself under attack from an enemy which hates Christians. I decided to make this video in the hope that it will alert some people overseas, maybe here in Armenia, to see what they can do to help in this situation. It's very interesting to me that different nations of the world are calling for peace and a return to negotiations in this process. Negotiations, of course, between the Azerbaijani government and the Armenian government, which, of course, really have amounted to nothing because there, there is always fighting of some sort going on on the border. And so I want to just illustrate something to you that you may not have thought about before. If you have a home that's been in your family's possession for years and years and years, let's say generations. And one day somebody comes along and says, no, we want a piece of this land, a piece of this belongs to us. When you know, historically, that this home has always been in your family, what would you do? Allow that uh, person or person's to say, yes, go ahead, please take, uh, let's share and share alike, after all. Of course not. This um, home belongs to you. And it's sacred. It's the same situation in Armenia. It's sacred territory. It belongs to the Armenian people, the people of Armenia, the people of Artsakh. And so much blood has been spilt. And now we see again hundreds of people, hundreds of boys in particular, and even innocent mothers and children being killed. So what can we do? If you're a man and if you're Armenian and if you live overseas, maybe you could think about coming to support your brothers here because 19, 20, 21 year old boys are being killed. Yes, of course, they're being killed on the other side too. But they started this aggression, don't forget. They started this aggression. It's not the young boys' fault, it's the fault of stupid governments. All they want is to, <clears throat> to be powerful and to claim what they believe is theirs, which is, is, of course, it's not. So what can we do? We can pray. We can pray for our boys. We can pray for all the mothers who've lost uh, their loved ones. We can pray for the children who are now without fathers. We can ask God to thwart all uh, attempts of the enemy to repel them, to send them back because we really don't want this conflict. Something has to be done. It's not enough just to say let's return to the negotiation table when your enemy has come through your door and is killing people. I read today in the book of uh, Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew and chapter 17, Jesus said, If you have a faith as of a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, Go from here and go over there. 
nothing shall be impossible to you. Nothing. So we are praying for our boys and all those involved in, the, in this new conflict that they will be safe. But I'm going to add something else, that God will... I'm praying to God that he will repel this enemy force and send them backwards, confound them, confuse them, so that they don't know what they're doing and bring to a swift end this conflict once and for all. It's enough. Too many lives have been lost. That's all I have to say. And I pray, I pray for these, for the boys' families who have now received news that their young boys are, have been killed. Today, my wife and I were on the street. We went to the church. We prayed. And on the way back, on the way back, we saw busloads of men. Yes, busloads of men. Volunteers to go and help these poor boys who are fighting this battle. So the least we can do is to pray for them. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.